Well, this is how you put the seal on. They won't go on cold, so you bring them in the house, you put them in your wife's sink, hot water, and then you install it. You just gotta dig it out of the sink while it's hot. And when bam, it's on. Piece of cake. You like it in your sink, don't you? No. I'm always worried you're going to drop something like that like on my granite <laughs> and crack it. I've done it more times than you know while you haven't been home. I'm sure. He also put a scratch in my nice dining room table one time. And I think there's been stuff dropped in my tub. That ain't me. I don't do stuff in the tub. That's the boys. Yeah. When they were cleaning guns. I don't, I don't, well, okay, I clean my gun in the tub, but not that kind of gun. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't scratch anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So the boys, uh, they've got the one cylinder on number one here and all those new hoses up there that replaced all that. Um, we're just waiting for the other one to be re-chromed. I got the pin in. Um, they moved the filthy whore over here uh, so we can get access to it with the service truck. We've got to pull the right steering ram off and reseal it. And uh, I've taken the hydraulic steering cylinder off this one into S&G Electric and they are using their uh, vertical mill to uh, bore the end of the ram where it goes right there and uh, put bearings in it. And Jake has just welded the bearing out of that one there so we can replace it. Okay, this is the other barrel that I took in and had it machined and we just got it back and what I did is I had them install these bearings in here now from originally when they were built they didn't have bearings in them and like some of the later Model D's and E's they started to put bearings in there so I thought well I'll just buy the uh, later model ones the bearings to go in there well no that ain't gonna fit because cat decided to go from a two and five eighths inside diameter on that to a two and three quarter and so the bearing on the neck is also bigger so you would have to line bore the bracket on the neck well that'd be a major pain in the ass and expense so what I did is I bought the bearings. See, there's two bearings. The same ones that are in the back go in this end, and, it, and you leave a gap between them, and that's how the grease goes around there and lubricates the pin. So that's what I've done back here, is I've used the same bearings that go up front to go back here. And then we have a new pin coming. This is the old pin, and this was a bad design. They used a teardrop with a hole, and then you put a bolt in it. Well, as soon as the hole got sloppy, and then on top of that, they didn't grease in here, it would twist it, break it off, and smash it. And uh, not a good design. So I'm not sure how the newer ones do it. We've con converted, uh, like on the Filthy Whore, We've converted the pins on the apron over to a newer style where they use a U-shaped retainer you weld on. And then the pin is straight, rectangle, goes inside that retainer. And then there's a, a, a two-bolt plate that bolts over that. That way, as the hole gets worn and it starts to move, it doesn't break this off. This was a kind of a bad design, this teardrop. And then the other bad thing that can happen is these are friction welded. So if the pin breaks off, and I've seen them do it in here, it will fall out the bottom and hit the ground. <laughs> and then your cylinder comes off and you do all kinds of damage. 
So generally what we do is we take the bottom and we weld something across there so that if the pin ever came disconnected from this retainer, it couldn't fall through the hole. So anyway, that one's ready to go on. Uh, Matt just took the, the rod off the other ram, off the filthy whore down to Pokey. It's going to need to be re-chromed. It has a gouge in the side of it, and that's why it's leaking oil. If you're a machinist and somebody brings a caterpillar bearing into you, uh, like the steering ram, the number one thing you got to remember is with any kind of a bearing that's caterpillar, they are not standard size. So you would think this is a, well, even the insides aren't standard. This isn't even, the inside of this is not even uh, uh, two and five eighths. It's like 2.600. So it's 25 under five eighths. And then your outside is not going to be three and a quarter. See, it's going to be three two twenty five, and so if you go cutting the bore for a three and a quarter bushing, you're going to be too big. And Cat, I think, probably does this on purpose for a reason, and that is to keep you from going and buying uh, a brassolite bushing uh, because they come in standard sizes. And Cat does not want you buying them from someone else. So, again, if you're doing machine work, uh, you got to keep that in mind. And the reason I say that is, so the steering cylinder that we took to the machine shop, uh, he overboard the hole in the back for these bearings. Uh, they're a 3.225. OD in the back here and because uh, he just figured you know it was a standard three and a quarter outside diameter bearing and these are a brassolite and he could get brassolite he knows what it is and so a standard one would be 3.250 and cat is 3.225 so he overboard it so he had to cut a sleeve and put in here and then put the bearings in. So uh, I'm not worried about it. I mean, this went 45 years before it slopped this hole out. I'm sure with these brass light bearings, it'll go another 45. I'll be dead before the boys have to, to redo this. But anyway, just a heads up for those that machine stuff. You get anything cat, uh, measure it twice, cut once. So this is the barrel, steering barrel off the Filthy Whore, the one that's leaking. And uh, probably what we'll do with this one to tighten it up too is, it's not as bad as the other one, but it's got a pretty good groove in there. And like I was showing you on that one, if the pin breaks loose from the retainer on top, it will fall right out this hole. So we like to take something and put a cross here and weld it so that can never happen. But this is the bearing that would go in there. And uh, it's the same one that goes in the rod end. There's two of them. And so it works really well to repair this. That way, you know, if it ever does wear out again, it ain't going to be in my lifetime, but if you had to change the bearings... It's easy to take bearings out. You just weld them and they fall out. And then uh, either put liquid propane on them and that'll shrink them up. It makes them a lot easier to drive in. You don't damage the bore. You don't wear it out. Uh, they should have made this in here all greasable. On these old ones, none of that stuff is greasable. So what we have to do uh, to fix that is uh, the bearing for the later models that greases is like quarter inch bigger on the OD, and so we can't use it. So what we have to do is we go out there, we drill a hole in the eye, and we thread it 
uh, for a grease fitting, eighth inch pipe thread. And we make sure and we center that on there. Then we take this bearing and we find center on it. You can't drill these. Uh, I don't know if somebody could water jet this. Uh, maybe plaza it, but what we've done in the past is we just took a torch and just blew a hole in there. And then what you got to do is you got to go on the inside and you got to grind a groove around it or the grease won't flow around the pin. Um, but that's the way we do it so that we can grease them. That way they last. Uh, and that's the way they should have been built from, you know, get go. But I think Cat figured out later on that, you know, they needed to change them up and grease them. This is the trunnion on the uh, bowl lift cylinder. And this bearing was split. And the one inside the cap wasn't in good condition. So we got a new bearing. And it fits sloppy on this because the other one was split. So what you do in a case like this is you go and get bearing mount and the primer that goes with it you clean this shaft up good and you clean this bearing good up with alcohol and uh, you take bearing mount and put it on there liberally and then I push the bearing on it took one hammer hit to push it all the way to the bottom well two and it was all the way to the bottom so we stood the barrel up so that this was uh, vertical and then I took and I, I poured bearing mount around the bearing and it ran down in there and none of it ran out the bottom so it totally filled any voids in here with the bearing mount and then I took my map gas torch and just warmed up the end of this and did it several times because the heat would travel down in and around here and if you want this bearing mount to set up really good uh, put some heat to it and that stuff will will harden like steel now I have seen some amazing things done with bearing mount we'll see how long this lasts on there I'm hoping it doesn't split it and that it stays tight but bear, cat bearing mount well it's not cat anymore it's Loctite it was always Loctite but that bearing mount is wicked stuff and if you put the primer on with it and it's something that fits fairly tight you better get it on and get it on now because it will set up instant uh, you don't get much time once you put the primer on it so we've re repaired that while we had it off figured we might as well um, fix that up and it it's it's quite a bit tighter now than it was we probably should have replaced them all see that one's pretty sloppy probably should have should have replaced them all and especially where you got a tight one on one side not the other that's probably not a good deal these this is the bowl lift ram head we've got the seals in it it's all cleaned up and uh, ready to go as soon as we get the rod re chrome back from that this is the steering cylinder head off the filthy horror and the newer models they they've drilled and tapped it right here and then you, you screw in a bolt with a, a hard flat on i think i don't know if they do it on just one side or two but that will retain this wiper seal uh, what we have to do with them and they tell you in the instructions is you clean this up really good and we use alcohol on it and then you get out the bearing mount and you you have to take these uh, wiper seals and they have an anti-corrosion stuff applied to the outside metal shell of them. So you've got to take a, a piece of emery paper and you've got to sand them and clean them up good. And then take alcohol and wipe down the outside and then wipe the inside of the bore and the head here. And then I, I like to use the, the primer for the bearing mount. And I put primer on here and then the case of the seal and let it dry. Then I put the bearing mount on and then I drive it in. 
if you don't bearing mount these, uh, just the sheer friction of this running on the chrome rod, it can literally push this out of the bore and then you're, you're really screwed. So, uh, even on non cat stuff, if you've got this type of press in wiper seal, make sure to use some, uh, bearing mount on it to lock it in there or drill and tap this so you can put a bolt in with a large washer to hold it. Uh, that's the only way to retain them. Uh, the other thing uh, I wanted to talk to you about was this. This is what's left of a uh, oversized cylinder uh, head seal. And this was in the steering cylinder. I don't know why we put that in there, but we did. We had a heck of a time getting the head off. Now we should have our heads examined for this. Hold on to your butt. But these are generally used for oversized barrels. And maybe the barrel's oversized ten thousandths or so. They say you can go ten thousandths and use the O-ring and the backup ring and they'll still seal. But if you've got a head that's leaking between it and the barrel, you want to install one of these. And when you buy a kit, they'll come with them. And this is what they look like. And this is just going to go over the flange on the head. And then when you bolt that up, it's going to pinch it between the head and the chamfer on the barrel. And that's why this one looks the way it does. Now the other thing you can do, and they do offer this, you take this to a machine shop and they cut a groove right here. And you put an O-ring in there, and then when it goes against the barrel, it smashes it and seals it. Now this one, we had it cut for the head wear ring. Uh, that's what this is called right here. And your cylinder runs on this. Now, you can only have a maximum of five thousandths clearance between your chrome rod and this in here. So if you don't have the wear ring and it's metal and it's wore it, after you get over five thousandths, that rod moves in there and it moves the seals and you're gonna get you're gonna get oil squirting out the seals. So uh, that's why we cut them for the head wear ring. That way you just change it and you never have to worry about it. Your clearances are correct. And this is what the this is the headwear ring we had to put in that other barrel because somebody used aftermarket. This is a standard uh, wear sleeve. This is an eighth inch thick sleeve. Uh, it's cat, of course. They don't do anything standard because again, they don't want you buying that aftermarket stuff. They want you using theirs, and and theirs is a as an oddball size. Uh, I got lucky. And I called my buddy Andy Bloomquist over in Boise. Uh, he's got a machine shop, a hydraulic shop over there called Advantage Machine. And he knew exactly what I needed. All right. If you've got an old cat cylinder or whatever that was set up for packing, this is the replacement for the packing. This is called a U-cup seal. And... Uh, this side goes against the oil, the pressure, and then this is called a buffer, and this just takes up space. 
and it walks in there a little bit. But you can see how bad the outside of that is worn. Well, it's because that old head that we took off the steering ram on number two, uh, packing tends to destroy the gland in there because it walks and it makes it washboardy. But it's really, really rusty in there. Uh, it's allowed water to get in there. And so it's rusted it. And because this moves back and forth in there, you can see that it destroyed it, uh, just pitted it and tore it up. I don't like these. I, I assume that you could probably take the head and have it sleeved in there and repaired, but this is just not as good a seal as the newer style seals. They use two seals in there, a buffer seal and, a, and another U-cup seal. And when you got a good chrome rod and a good uh, headwear ring, uh, things are tied in there, they'll go a long, long time without uh, giving you any grief. But these, they can go in the garbage. Remember, uh, we tried to fix this valve and we thought it ha we had it whipped. Nope. Should have went with uh, my initial gut feeling, which was throw it in the garbage and get a new one. And sure enough, I've tightened it three times now. And it's got, we've filled the tank with oil. And uh, it's dripping on the ground. So now we're going to have to drain it back into the barrel put a new valve on it you know after thinking about this okay this is the bearing that goes in the rod end of the ram this is the bearing that goes in the neck on the barrel end and i was telling you that we blow a hole in here and then we have to grind a groove inside to make that greasable well it my my brain finally engaged and i thought you know what they put two of these in the rod end why don't I just put two of these on the neck end that leaves a quarter inch space between them for the grease to go through end of problem <laughs> so that's what I've done I've ordered five more of these uh, two of them will go in this two of them will go in the filthy whore and then the extra one in this one We'll go in the the barrel end of the filthy horror and, and we'll have those repaired. So I want to show you what we're doing on number two here. So that's where the steering cylinder goes. And in that back eye back there, normally your C models and your D models didn't come greasable. They just had one bushing in there, no grease. So what we do is we put the two short bearings uh, these are the same ones that go in the rod end of the cylinder. We put those in there, we drill a hole and tap it for a grease fitting. And then that will make this last a good long time. And then on the other side here of number two, you can see we already updated this side and it's got a greasable bearing in it. So now it has greasable bearings on both sides. Number one has greasable bearings on both sides on the rear. And the Filthy Horror is about to get one on the right rear. I don't know if we'll do the left one or not. We'll see how much time we've got. Got a lot of work to do. I've got a brand new floor laying over there to go in this old girl. Uh, it's been laying over there for a couple of years now. Uh, I buy my floors in uh, California from uh, an outfit called Steel Unlimited. Let me go over and show you that. Okay, this is a brand new floor for a 637. Um, this has, I'll show you a cross-section on the side here. Okay, this has a 
half inch AR 400 top, a 3 8 AR 400 bottom with 40 pound per foot ship channel between it. And then it has a one inch thick T1 frog for the cutting edge to bolt to. Anyway, I have replaced the floors in the filthy whore and number one. Uh, those floors we fabricated ourselves. Uh, we just bought the parts from Steel Unlimited and then we welded them together. This one I chose to have them do it. Now the other thing they make is uh, arm kits, uh, apron kits, complete apron kits. Uh, they offer uh, light brackets. They fab all kinds of cat scraper stuff. Uh, it's just incredible what they can do. So if you need something for a scraper, I would call Steel Unlimited. This is the, the bearing that goes in that back eye on the neck for the, the back of the steering barrel. And then these are the two bearings that go in the rod eye on the cylinder. So all you need to do to change this up in an old C or an early D model is just weld this old bearing out, uh, find the center of the eye, uh, drill it and tap it for your eighth inch pipe thread grease fitting, then take these. And what we do is I just went in town and bought $2 worth of dry ice. Uh, I chilled these down and then knocked these in with a hammer. Knock the one in from the top until it's flush here and knock the bottom one in until it's flush at the bottom. That will leave you that gap right there where the your grease hole is, and then you can grease this. And the grease will come up, and it'll get under that barrel where it wears and keep that from wearing. Uh, it just makes things last. So that's how you update one of those old girls. Um, that's what we're doing with them. I have uh, taken a hammer... And I beat that bearing till it cracked. Actually, it broke some pieces off. That way I could get it off. But these are so hard and they're thin. Uh, it, just, it was pretty easy to smack it and fracture it. So uh, we are going to replace this bearing on the trunnion and the one in the cap. Because we got a brand new one over here. And it's nice and tight. And it just dawned on me the other night, I'm looking at that and I'm going, there's no way that's going to work with a wore out bearing on this side and a brand new one on that side. Because when you go to pick up the bowl, that whole thing's going to twist and it's going to break that new bearing. So got to replace them in sets. So here's some of the steering hoses uh, that we've taken off that are going to go down and get repaired, replaced. There's just no way of knowing how old this is. But when you see a tag like that on there, that usually comes from the factory. Um, but I want to show you. Okay, so down on this end, you can kind of see where it's... It, we're starting to get some weather checking and it's coming apart. So rather than have a problem at the facility we're going to. It's a government facility, so uh, blowing a hose and cleaning up a mess is it's just not in the cards. We ain't got time to do that or the money to waste to do that. So anything that's got 9,000 gallons of paint on it, it's got old factory tags and old weathered looking hose, we're going to have that replaced. So uh, we don't have a lot of hoses to replace. The ones un under the hitch, all those have been replaced. They're all in good shape. They've been protected, so we're not worried about these. But occasionally you get one of these old ones that just decide to blow up uh, for no reason. And they've just come to the end of their life now. You know, a hose that's 45 years old... That's pretty damn good service life, so I just really can't bitch about that. So, some people have been asking about Shane, and so I've decided to do an update here. 
Uh, 13th was his final disability hearing. He went to Pocatello to the courthouse. Uh, he did that via video conference with the judge in Boise. The judge asked uh, his attorney and him who Jeff Anderson was and what are these pictures he sent me. So I'm going to pick my words very carefully here. I'm frustrated. Shane's frustrated. Uh, so six months ago, I contacted my U.S. Senator Mike Crapo, asked him to get involved. He did. He wrote him a letter. Uh, they wrote a letter back out of Billings, Montana, that said, thank you for contacting us, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Shane's hearing is still February 13th. Have a nice day. So I took it upon myself to write the nice lady in Billings a letter and include two 8 by 11 pictures of the 40 pound tumor that they took out of Shane along with an explanation of his current uh, medical situation. Uh, anyway, she was nice enough to forward that information to the judge in Boise. Uh, therefore, he has postponed a decision because it was obvious he didn't have the complete medical information because the doctor and the fine attorney did not take care of that. So that, well, okay, I'm not, I, I'm not saying nothing there. Anyway, so I even sent this stuff to the to the White House in hopes that something would happen there. It's complete BS. I know that. Shane knows that. Uh, I'm about ready to pull my hair out. Uh, I just don't know what else to do. It's in the hands of the judge. Hopefully he makes the correct decision. Now, the night before the hearing, his attorney sprung this little bit of information on him, which I think is awesome. Uh, Social Security does not consider giving you back disability pay until you're 50 years old. Shane just barely turned 50 in January. So this has been going on two years for nothing. Anyway, so that's where it stands. It's in the judge's hand. I don't know when he's going to make his decision. Uh, I hope soon. I hope he gives him his back pay just based on the pictures I sent him and the new medical information. Uh, he's a judge, he has to follow the rules. We'll see what he does. To those of you that have donated, thank you very much. The GoFundMe campaign has been closed. Uh, if you wanna donate, click the more button in the description. If you wanna send a check, make sure it's made out to Shane Persons. Send it to my address, I'll get it to him. If you want to send cash, that's really cool because Shane can't have a bank account. So cash is king. It makes it simple. I want to thank uh, the gentleman who just sent another donation from Oregon. He's done this like two or three times now. That's totally awesome. You are a sweetheart, sir. Thank you very much for sending cash. Uh, we appreciate that. So if you want to continue to donate, that's that would be more than welcome. I know Shane would love that. Uh, so there's that information. Uh, thank you very much. I don't know what else to say. I'm just trying to bite my tongue here uh, and be careful what I say. It's just so frustrating. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of the Whiteboard. I want to introduce you to some of my awesome subscribers, and I got a lot of them. I want to start out with Jeffrey Reedy, who's from Galena, Kansas. Graham Miller from Hazlitt, Texas. Benny Bruin from the south side of Chicago. Is that the tough side, Benny? Uh, Greg Scott, he's from Halifax, Nova Scotia. And Wayne Rogers, who's from Toronto, Canada. Thank you, Wayne. Eh? Uh, Aussie HD Gaming from Australia. Thank you for subscribing down under. 
And Pertu Kartunen from Finland. Thank you for subscribing all the way from Finland. That's awesome. Yes, we are still playing the drinking game. Every time whiteboard comes out, got to take a shot every time I say awesome. If you would like a Old Kenny coloring book, uh, link in the description below, and I'll pin it in the comments, along with a link to my store to buy the calendars, jpater.com. Uh, the new box of equipment calendars just shipped out yesterday out of Kansas. Should be here Saturday or Monday, as soon as they come, I will get those out to you. Uh, also, I got Anderson hats and Old Kenny hats if you want them. So, thank you for supporting me. That's really awesome, and we'll see you next week.